Okay, we got a good one for you today. Um, I've finally, finally, um, <laughs> I got this bad boy. Um, got it from Asus. You can see that it's even got Asus tape on it. Um, let's get into it. So we got a box in a box with a bunch of air. Look how long this thing is. This is the longest GPU box I've ever seen. This seems completely and utterly unnecessary. I don't know. But this is the, um, the Tough Gaming uh, OG OC. So this is the one that's the little bit smaller form factor. It's got the 4090 Ti style cooler on it. Um, so it's actually going to be a little bit smaller than my 4080. And so I think it's actually gonna fit in my case better. Um, and that's pretty much the reason I went with this. Well, two reasons. One was the form factor and the other was I actually really love the look of this thing. Well, look at this box. This is pretty rad actually. <laughs> look at this thing. It's got like a polygon type shaped, uh, tough themed box here. That's pretty cool. Uh, let me make sure there's no, no tape to remove. Oh, it does, it hinges. I'm trying to pop the whole thing off. I don't think there's going to be anything in here I really care about, but. <laughs> it's like a trading card. That's interesting. Paperwork. Thank you. 20% discount a cable mod. Well, I could have used that. Uh, but where, not that I need it because I did get a set of, uh, I got a cable mod for into the 12 volt, uh, a cable, but where this thing should have, uh, this guy opens up down here. I wonder if that other one opens up. There it is. Now, like I said, I don't, I don't need this, at least not right now, but there's half an octopus. So all this to the side. Make sure there's nothing in this other end thing. No. Look at this thing. I mean, just look at it. It's still pretty big. It's still pretty big. 
I'm gonna show you a comparison against the 4080 here in a minute, but. That's a chonky boy. It's got a really bad plasticky smell to it, I'll tell you that. But this is, is that metal? I think the whole shroud is metal. That is a really, really high quality looking cooler in there. There isn't like a better way to describe it. Just, you know, when you look at something you can just kind of, you can just tell like the fit and finish and the quality of this thing is absolutely nuts. All right, so there's the unboxing, pretty uneventful. Uh, I'm gonna show you the system that it's going into and we'll get to the teardown and the install. So this is not one that you guys normally see or have maybe seen at all unless you have watched my, um, my setup video. But this is the one that uh, I typically do most of my content creation on and my main gaming rig. This has got the, um, the 13700K and a Gigabyte Gaming OC4080. So first thing I gotta do, I'm gonna take the side panels off uh, get the 4080 out and get that thing out of there. Uh, and then I've got to get the, I'm going to take the power supply out and get my, and get my, um, four into 12 volt high power set up and ran through. Um, I may or may not have to keep this, I think it's in the opposite orientation though. I have, let's see, sense pins are on the top. Yeah, sense pins are on the bottom here. So I can't use that one, but I do have the correct one coming from cable mod. Well, I have the, I have their basics uh, cable like this one, but instead of the flat end, it's got the 90 degree end on it. I have that one coming. I used my, I used my code for a free one that I got from being an early adopter for that one. Um, so if I need to, I'll be able to use the 90 degree cable when that comes in. little comparison of the two. So this is the 4090 on top of the 4080. You can see this 4090 is just a hair shorter. It's a little bit thinner. They both uh, are three slot cards, but I think the my 4080 might be a little bit more than a three slot, like a three and a half. And this one is Maybe three, maybe two and a half, but they both have the two, two bracket end. All right, we gotta get the back side panel off. Let's see how bad my cable management is in here. Gotta get this guy out. This is my 
three to one um, cable set for the 4080. briefly considered getting a tough ATX 3.0 1000 watt PSU, but while it would have been nice um, to have that native 3.0 support, uh, I have a good PSU. This is a uh, 80 plus gold EVGA. It's going to work just fine. This guy back in. Okay, so PSU is in. I'm going to go ahead and route this power cord through. Moment of truth, does this thing fit like I think it's gonna? Like I want it to? Okay. You know, they did not include any kind of a sag bracket with this guy. It might be okay. The 4080 was actually okay. It maybe had a little tiny bit of sag, but generally it was pretty good. And now... You heard the click, folks. Or well, if you didn't, I did. There she is, all snug it at home. Here we are running Time Spy. I worked the memory clock up to a thousand, and then I've been tweaking up the core clock 20 at a time. My goal was kind of to get to 200. Um, I'm in the GPU test number two, and it's held through everything, so I think this is gonna be stable and give an even better score. I've been chasing, trying to get over 38,000, and we'll just have to see what happens here. 38,000 on the, on the GPU score. My CPU score earlier in the day when I was testing things out, I was getting um, just over 20,000, and the last few runs here, 
tonight I've been getting uh, in the 19,000 range. So I'm not really sure what that's about. I went back into the uh, Intel Extreme Utility and I've got just 100 megahertz overclock and a little tiny bit of a voltage increase, 0.02 um, on the P cores. Well, that's interesting. So this is the highest overall score that I've gotten. My CPU score came up a little bit, but my GPU score actually went down. So I'm gonna run this one more time. I'm gonna go back to 180 on the GPU clock overclock and run this again. And I just wanna point out for whatever it's worth that those settings got me in the top 13%. Not top 100, but you know, the 40, 90 liter boards are pretty competitive, lots of water cooling going on. So I think for having a tough version of the card, uh, this is pretty good. And I'm gonna leave well enough alone. Running Port Royal now. I just got a 27089, so I don't know. I'm probably playing with fire here, but I bumped the uh, I bumped the memory up to 1100 because I know that Port Royal likes memory. So we'll see if I, if that helped or hurt me. And did we beat 27089? We did. All right, I'm gonna take that win and we'll move on. And I just wanna do Speedway, 27191. Actually, let's see, let's see how we compare. Uh, top 22%, not too bad, I'll take it. And here's Speedway. I'm running the same settings that I ran on Port Royal, so the 180 on the GPU and 1100 on the memory. 10.581, I think that might be my highest score. It is. And top 17% there. So again, I'm gonna call that a win. Now all these scores, I could probably get higher in, um, if I really wanted to spend time tweaking this and everything, but when I game, I typically run at default settings anyway. I'm just doing this to see what I can get on these benchmarks for fun. I'm gonna record some gameplay too, but this is uh, Cyberpunk, the benchmark, uh, just ultra preset settings with no frame generation or upscaling on. Getting, uh, it's a little bit lower out here, 150s, 160s, getting 170s in the bar. So 166.13, minimum was pretty low. All right, we're running on RT Ultra now. Again, no upscaling. I'm not gonna do RT Overdrive with path tracing until we go. I'm just gonna run it in game because you absolutely have to run DLSS with it. And I've been running it with DLSS and frame generation. And it's, it's pretty sweet to be honest, but uh, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna use the benchmark in it. I just wanted to do these two quick runs and see. 74, one percent minimum FPS, 55 on RT Ultra. This is all in 1440p, by the way. I do not have a 4K monitor just yet. All right, so this is with uh, path tracing on. This is the. Um, RT overdrive mode. Let's take this pink car. I'll do anything. I'll do anything. Get out of here. What did I get a warrant for? Did I hit somebody? So this is with DLSS quality and frame generation on. Now, with just native uh settings like without any frame generation or upscaling i was getting like 35 fps dlss got me to like 65 and then frame generation almost doubled me here 
I'm looking for some bad guys to fight. Speed bump. Get out of the way, get out of the road. So now I want to knock it down to just ray tracing ultra and it constantly wants to put this in auto and I don't even know what auto does. I, I definitely don't want it to be dropping down to balance and performance so I keep clicking it on quality and then I hit apply. Okay, sometimes it kicks it back to performance after I hit apply. So this is uh, only quote unquote uh, ray tracing ultra. We do have DLSS quality on. And we're still getting 150, 160 FPS. Again, 1440p, this isn't 4K, but uh, <laughs> this thing is just nuts nonetheless. You gonna do something? You gonna do something? Come on, do something. Do something. There was an attempt made to hurt V. Okay, DLSS off. Frame generation off. So as you can see on RT Ultra, I'm still getting over 60 FPS with no upscaling. In 1440p, again, 4K is gonna be probably necessary. What is with this van? Hey, hey, come here. Dude, just gonna stay in here? Or is he dead because they hit that pool? Whatevs. Speed bump. I don't know if I've ever noticed this van before. It's kind of like a cool, like, uh, A Team style van. Hey, let's go the wrong way up this on ramp. <laughs> We're dropping below 60 there. Look at the fishies. You see that sunbeam coming through there? That's pretty sick. Dude, why is everybody calling me? Alright, last thing I'm going to do is let's turn... DLSS on quality. We're going to leave frame generation off, so we're in RT Ultra. Quality. So no frame generation. Getting about a hundred. Let's turn frame generation on. And that gave us 50 FPS, okay. Now in this game, frame generation is pretty good. Um, it's like, 
I mean, it adds frames, but it it, it hasn't it hasn't hurt anything. But that's because we had a decent frame rate um, with DLSS on at the baseline. Those guys have skulls on their heads. Ooh. Oh, it got me. Well. We'll call that good for Cyberpunk, and uh, let's go check out Immortals of Avium real quick. All right, Immortals of Avium uh, display. You can see 1440p. VSync off. DLSS is off. No upscaling at all. Graphics. Everything is on ultra or high. Uh, interestingly enough, we have exceeded the CPU budget on a 13700K, which I find hilarious. All right. Yo, this is wild. This game is nuts. Okay, why do I say that? Like, I mean, it looks amazing, but this is a 4090. 13700K, 32 gigs of RAM, overclocked to 6,000 megahertz. Um, and we're not getting 100 FPS in native resolution. Like, I just... That's wild to me. If this is the way games are going to go, I don't think it's going to be good. And it's too bad, too, because this game is really cool, but... Man, it's hard to run. I mean, 4090 is getting 70 FPS. I don't know, maybe some of that is a CPU limitation. Um, 22, 23% utilization, 25. And this does, uh, I think that's accurate because when I monitor in hardware info, I've, I've compared them side by side, Afterburner uh, with hardware info. So I don't think, you know, even though we're way over on the CPU budget, I don't think it's holding us back based on that. I mean, my overclock is holding. I overclocked it to 5.5 gigahertz. It's doing that. So, yeah, I don't know. Let's go ahead and we'll turn DLSS on. And now we're over 100. And, like, that's cool, I guess, you know. But it, I, I don't know. So we're staying over 100. No, we're dropping down to the high 90s, but... What do we get with frame generation? Now we're cooking. So, all you need to max out your 144 hertz monitor is a 4090 and a 13700K. <laughs> oh, what a time to be alive. It is holding pretty close to 150 though, with frame generation on. And again, like Cyberpunk, this is a game where you're not really gonna feel like I wouldn't, I wouldn't use frame generation in an online shooter, but in these uh, AAA single-player games, I think it's a pretty cool feature if you want to boost your frames. It does improve the visuals, but it's not if you're if you're running lower FPS, like 40 FPS, and you have, use frame generation to get you over 60, it's gonna look 
like it's over 60, but it's not going to feel like it because they're fake frames. All right, well, that's the 4090. Um, Cyberpunk and Immortals of Avium, those are the two hardest games I have to run right now, I believe. I've also got, so this video is going to go up first because this is the last uh, piece that I had to shoot for it. But the next video is going to be, um, I have this footage filmed, I just have to edit it as well, but it's uh, Immortals of Avium again, and I ran the 1660 Super through it, the 1080 Ti, and the Arc A770. Uh, you'll definitely want to check out that video, it's pretty interesting. Uh, the results may surprise you. Uh, but that'll be coming in the next few days. Uh, if you watch this, if you're, this is going to be up on Thursday, uh, August 31st. If you're watching it, if you're watching this video, then um, tonight, August 31st, I'm going to be streaming Starfield as soon as I can get the code from AMD and get it installed on the Starfield system. So if you want to check that out, that'll be on tonight, August 31st. If you're watching this in the future, then you missed it, but it'll be on my it'll be on my vods. So for right now, Mag is out and. I'm going to go and mess around with Armored Core 6.